it's instructive to analyze whether or not the violent and intolerant religion of Islam I'm triggered. had anything to do with Saeed Farouk's rampage. It's instructive to note that Ishmael Brinsley's desire to carry out a Black Lives Matter revenge attack led to the murder of two NYPD cops. It's instructive to understand the unhinged and radical beliefs that led Dylan Roof to massacre nine black churchgoers. What's completely worthless is to blame an entire race for a tragedy within minutes before you even know anything about what happened, simply to bolster your political agenda and virtue signal to all your trendy progressive friends on Twitter. And then abandon that entire narrative and pretend nothing happened when reality doesn't conform to your bias. So when the next mass shooting happens, whether the culprit is black, white or Arab, let's not use it to castigate an entire race. Let's not immediately hijack the tragedy before the bodies are cold to advance our political agenda. Let's not attack people simply for offering their prayers to the victims. Let's wait until the facts are known before making complete fools out of ourselves. You know, with all this talk lately about gun control, it occurred to me that I have yet to see a single politician who can explain to me how they plan to take guns away from the criminal thugs who are out there on the streets right now. Oh, sure, you'll hear plenty of talk about how they plan to take guns away from us, us law-abiding citizens. But if you take guns away from all of us legal gun owners, then the only people that will have guns will be the bad guys. In fact, I'm curious. I want to see a show of hands right now. All those for gun control, raise your hand. All right, there's one, two, three, four. Anyone else? Ah, see there, that figures. All the usual suspects. Any questions? You guys have the exclusive for, which is a product called Deep Cleanse. And why I'm so excited about it is it's a unique formula, almost like the iodine crystals. We have two unique products that nobody in the world has. One of the most amazing ingredients in the world, and it's called shilajit, and it's actually known as blood of the mountain or rock sweat because thousands of years ago, as a matter of fact, this ingredient was only given to the elite of the elite. Thousands of years ago, up in the Himalayan mountains and in Tibet. And we wanted to put this in, in stuff for, for a couple of years, but we couldn't get an organic form. Right. I mean, so I, let's explain. I mean, we, this stuff's so good, we couldn't put it out for years. Right. So I had to actually, it's kind of like the iodine crystals, finding a source deep in the earth that we could get the cleanest source available. But in Tibet and in Nepal and in the Himalayan mountains, Thousands of years ago, they found, they watched these monkeys. And during the summer months, the monkeys would go up into the mountains. Now you're being racist against monkeys. And they would pick this black substance from the mountains. And so uh, in Russia, they actually, it, it, it grows in Russia in the mountains and in the Himalayas and only in the summer. And Chilajit is actually the decomposition of seven, up to 7,000 different medicinal herbs. So it decomposes, all these different herbs decompose in the Himalayan mountains and the volcanic soil up there. And what happens in the summertime- So it's almost like an oil up. from- Yes, it's high in fulvic acid, it's high in humic acid. Because they're always claiming out. oil is really from decomposed animals and plants. There is some oil that is based from fossils, but most of it's really abiotic. But so, so this is a true fossil uh, source. I mean, explain it to me. It is. A, it's really the decomposition, like I said, of over seven thousand different medicinal herbs and plants. And it, and with the rocks and the pressure deep in the mountains, it freezes and. And during the summertime and the pressures build it up, it oozes out. It oozes out. So it literally oozes out of the mountain. It's like rock sap. It's like rock sap. It's black and it's highly nutritious. Uh, even in the 1980s, when the Olympic athletes in Russia were accused of being on steroids, they found out that they were actually been given shalajit because it, it works as an anabolic as well. 
and it builds muscles. It's a big dose in there. The second big main ingredient in there is a volcanic zeolite concentrate. And this, what this formula is designed to do, the shilajit and the zeolites have a real strong negative charge. All the metals and chemicals and PCBs and VOCs have positive charges. So these go in, they grab it, and then they safely eliminate it through the body so you can become healthy. I mean, the, this is an amazing formula. I wish I actually had it, but because this was an exclusive InfoWars Life product, you're the only one in the world that has this formula now. And, uh, you know, there is going to be a limited supply available when you sell out because you can only harvest this once a year. How do people take it? How is it recommended that this be done? Just a daily, daily dose? Yeah, daily dose. Uh, the instructions are on the label. You know, of course, I, I kind of modify it for each individual. It depends on what your lifestyle is. I mean, the, honestly, the best thing to do is for you to avoid all these chemicals and toxins in your environment and try to identify them and start slowly reducing them. But personally, I, I'm going to probably take it every day, every other day, and I'll probably go with about a dropper full to maybe two dropper fulls. Uh, and I and I, li I don't expose myself to any chemicals. Infowarslife.com. Please also support our local AM and FM affiliates, support their local sponsors, or become a sponsor and spread the word. Because these aren't just great products. This is how we fund this independent operation. We're not taxpayer funded like MSNBC or NPR, and neither is your local station. So support them, folks. This is a war. <laughs> Well, recently we have seen some totalitarian calls to silence any dissenters from the climate change cult. My guest today has firsthand experience uh, for, of this agenda, filmmaker J.D. King. Now, we had him on Monday night to talk about the latest in climate news. Uh, as well, he wanted to talk to us about his latest film that he's working on with the Kickstarter project. Now, right before appearing as our guest Monday night, he uploaded his full-length film, Blue Beats Green, to his YouTube channel, the theme of which is pro-freedom, pro-economic development, and pro-environment. So, of course... His was a dissenting opinion delivered in a beautiful and approachable way. So that makes him a target. All right, J.D., thank you so much for joining us once again. Now, for those who might not have seen Monday night's interview, can you briefly just give us the gist of the film? Sure. So right now we're running a Kickstarter campaign to get our uh, our film Vice Bear funded. And the idea is we're trying to use the icon of the global warming movement really since day one, the polar bear, uh, you know, the ice bears, what, what people call it, um, as uh, as proof basically that counters all the hysteria because there's more polar bears now than there's ever been. In fact, when Al Gore was born, uh, since Al Gore was born, Polar bears have increased by like fivefold. Some people think sevenfold. So they've gone from like 5,000 to 25, 30,000 bears. We're talking about an apex predator, has no natural predators, largest carnivore that lives on land in the world. And uh, if it's increasing in population, it's healthy, it's thriving. But um, the average person off the street would think it's dying because of climate change. Um, so that's what the film gets into. And it starts begging the question, if they've screwed up on polar bears so bad, which when you think about it is so simple. So simple compared to something infinitely more complicated like climate change. You know, if they messed up the easy one, how can we possibly dream of trusting them with something more complicated like climate change? Now, right before you appeared on our show Monday night, you uploaded the full length uh, film Blue Beats Green to your yep. YouTube channel. And then, you know, by the time you were finished with the interview, what happened there with YouTube? Well, the publicity that I got from InfoWars um, grabbed somebody's attention because my account was shut down. Not only was the film deleted, but uh, YouTube completely suspended my account. I, I can't access any of the videos that I put up anymore. Um, and, and that's really what um, what got a lot of this going, a lot of this, this YouTube controversy. I, I've contacted YouTube several times um, in the last uh, day and a half, and I have appealed the decision for them to suspend my account. But uh, they said, we reviewed your account again, decided to keep it suspended. So I've appealed again, and I haven't heard anything back, but it looks like they're going to keep it shut down. Because I had, right right before I talked to you last night, I was uh, I had uploaded my last film, Blue, which is an expose of the environmental movement. It exposes small-scale environmentalism in uh, America, how it affects the average Joe. And it, it also exposed a lot of the national and global uh, environmental issues, inter environmental issues like climate change and Agenda 21. Uh, it was very well shot, uh, beautifully made film. Um, my friends helped me do it. We raised the money for that actually on Kickstarter about three years ago, and um, somebody just doesn't like it, and uh, they wanted to silence the truth. 
Right. And so there, obviously, you have a very powerful message. And on the one hand, you have inconvenient truth there, which has been debunked. And, you know, they're not silencing that. There's not the little YouTube minion who's deciding that that violates YouTube's policies there. Right. Um, but you, your account was actually flagged saying uh, it, the account had been terminated, citing violations of YouTube's policy right. against spam, gaming, misleading content or other violations right. there. What, what do you think was the what do you think was the thing, the trigger there for them to say it was misleading content? Yeah, they just didn't like didn't like the content. That's where I think it boils down to. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there was not a community of um, of vicious environmentalists out there um, who were part of flagging a lot of my videos. Uh, but even then, um, they've never given me one specific reason why they suspended the account at mm -hmm. all. It's been vague. You suspended something in our terms. Uh, or you uh, you violated something in the agreement somewhere for YouTube, um, you know, misleading conduct or not conduct, but um, content, content well, and spam. I mean, I've been accused of it's like, what did I do? Right. And how long had the trailer been up prior to you uploading the full length film on Monday night? Oh, my, my channel's been around for for years. Mm -hmm. uh, it's loaded with educational content that exposes so many environmental misnomers today. Uh, from all the experts they interviewed in the film, there were some great bonus clips up there. It had been around forever. I had my full-length film, uh, Crying Wolf, which was the first film that I did that exposed the uh, Gray Wolf introduction into uh, uh, Montana, Yellowstone National Park, and now really the entire United States. That film was up there. It had like close to, I think, 40 or 50,000 views. And um, it's also, uh, by the way, on Vimeo where you can still watch that film. And I did re-upload uh, Blue, otherwise known as Blue Beat Screen, to my Vimeo channel. Um, and so far it's still up and uh, it's getting a lot of traction over there. Right. And, I, you know, Matt Drudge visited the studio about, you know, five weeks ago. And this was one of his points with being corralled into these certain ghettos uh, on onto the internet, people get stuck in these little ghettos thinking that's the only place that they can upload their content and they yeah. want to trick people into, you know, putting everything into that one place. And then so you have this one guy sitting in YouTube deciding that, you know, your channel uh, has misleading content on it. And this is so important with sure. this uh, because YouTube is now taking this policy of presumed guilt. They can censor your entire channel, take down everything um, preemptively if they do not agree with the message. They want to be able to control the narrative that is out there. And, of course, people should be outraged with this uh, because we're going to see more things like this happening with the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Of course, they've got those huge copyright infringement laws. Um, so briefly, just tell me a little bit about you know your latest endeavor with this Kickstarter and how people can help you. Sure. So we just launched three days ago. Uh, we've raised just over $4,000 so far. We need 25000 to officially kickstart the project. But what we're going to do, again, is just highlight. We're going to make a beautiful short film. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a captivating, uh, beautifully uh, produced um, uh, documentary style. And uh, it's going to expose the truth about the polar bears and, and sea ice. You know, there's more sea ice, just as much, basically the same, more in some areas uh, than, there, than there was when scientists first began monitoring it in 1979. There's, like I mentioned earlier, there's way more polar bears than there's ever been now. And so what we want to do, too, is connect people through the eyes of, um, of local people, like an Inuit, um, a native who lives up in the Arctic Circle and uh, who is just uh, whose, whose way of life has been destroyed by these international laws that are banning them from taking Westerners on polar bear hunts. That's that's really devastated many of these small villages. It's their only source of, of economy. And they want people to come in and hunt bears. Um, but you know what? The Global International has said, we know better than you and we're not going to let it happen. So we want to find that local um, Inuit who can kind of be our guide and be our voice. Right. Well, they definitely, obviously, that's one way to silence you is by taking down your entire channel. Obviously, they're sure. thinking they could possibly force you to change the content that you're putting out there. Yeah. And and hopefully we'll beat them in the end. I, I'm just disappointed because in the in light of the Paris conference right now that's going on and the interest in the subject, I had I had dozens of videos on there that talked about a lot of the different intricate um, details and, and really unique perspectives from um, very educated, credible people um, who disbelieve uh, the current theory on climate change. And so to have all that kind of go down hmm. right, you know, in the middle of the... That's of really the interesting. It's practice. it's quite curious, actually, that they do have that climate conference going on and, and you have this really educational yeah. channel with beautiful yeah. content there and, and it I mean, gets it, shut down. It, yeah, and it's well shot stuff. Um, it's well edited stuff. It's not, none of it's like, 
you know, freak out style. It's not, we don't try to intimidate people. Uh, we don't try to use fear tactics. It's just, you know, level-headed people saying, look, here's the facts. 